Our group's research is broadly based uh, around children's reading and language difficulties and we're heavily uh, involved in run, running randomised control trials looking at interventions to improve uh, language skills. Um, Oral language skills are critical for development. They provide the foundations for literacy and more broadly for uh, many other aspects of education. Um, one of the things we've become aware of recently is the need to try and find a way of providing teachers with suitable methods for screening to identify children with language weaknesses. And uh, we've developed an app in the context of one of the interventions we've developed which is called the Nuffield Early Language Intervention which we hope is going to be suitable for teachers to use as a way of identifying the kids who are suitable for intervention. I think more broadly I, we hope that this app will have wide applicability as a, as a way of assessing children's language skills. So we've called it ATLAS, the Automated Test of Language Abilities. Um, this is an app which runs on an Android device, it basically runs on a tablet. Uh, it'll also run quite nicely on an Android phone, although the screen often looks a bit small. Um, Atlas assesses four different aspects of children's language skills, their expressive vocabulary, their receptive vocabulary, their listening comprehension and their sentence repetition abilities and based on the pilot data we've got this seems to be suitable for kids roughly between the age of three and eight years. Uh, so when you launch the app on the tablet you're taken to an initial screen that looks like this where you're asked to give uh, the following details, the, the, the school postcode, the child's initials, their date of birth, their gender. We've just add, asked, added a question about whether they're EAL or not and the year of the school in which they're in. These details are used by the app to generate a, a code to identify each child. Um, the first test that the child does is a test of expressive vocabulary which is simply a naming test. Uh, the children see 24 pictures like this and they simply give the name for each of the pictures. Um, and the uh, tester um, marks their responses as correct or incorrect by uh, tapping a plus sign if they're correct or a minus sign if they're incorrect. Um, the receptive vocabulary uh, measure, uh, the children see three pictures on the screen and they hear a spoken word, in this case the app says wheel and all the child has to do is to uh, tap on the screen the object which has been named. Um, the distractors have been selected to include um, a semantic a distractor which has a sim similar meaning uh, and a phonological distractor which sounds similar to the to the target item. Uh, in this case we've used 31 items so far and the app automatically uh, records the child's response. Um, we reduce that to correct or incorrect but the app actually records which of the three pictures the child has touched. Uh, listening comprehension, this is a widely used measure of kind of, if you like, slightly higher level language skills. Um, in this task the child hears a story read to them from the app and after each of the two stories um, they're presented with six uh, comprehension questions and those comprehension questions target both uh, explicit or literal knowledge about what's happened in the passage and also inferential knowledge, um, information that's not directly uh, represented in the text. So here's uh, an example of one of the two stories we use. Um, Tilly went to the bus stop with her granny. She was excited. Today they were going to see the lions and the monkeys. 
The sun was shining as the bus arrived. The ride was bumpy, but Tilly did not mind. Soon they would watch the penguin, penguins being fed. Uh, so, for example, the first um, question um, is, a, is a literal question. Who, who was she going out with? Her, uh, her granny. Uh, where did Tilly go? We're wanting, her, wanting them to say she went to the zoo. But the word zoo is not actually uh, mentioned in the passage. Um, and uh, the fourth uh, test in Atlas is a measure of sentence repetition. Uh, sentence repetition sounds like a rather limited task, but in fact there's very good evidence psycholinguistically that the way you repeat a sentence is by encoding its meaning and essentially generating a new uh, a spoken form that corresponds to the sentence you've heard. Uh, so this is a measure that's very well used, I mean it's commonly used in, in assessments for children with uh, SLI or developmental language disorder because we know those children are particularly susceptible to grammatical problems and this test seems to be highly sensitive to such uh, grammatical problems. So in this uh, subtest, um, the child is told they're going to hear some sentences and after each sentence they simply have to repeat it to the tester. Um, we give them actually 12 sentences to repeat uh, in this order going from very simple sentences like Joe likes Lego or babies cry a lot to longer and grammatically more complex sentences like a boy gave the girl a ride on his bike. So um, that's the form of the app. So far we've got data from the app for just over 300 children. Uh, the age distribution shown here, we've got 60-odd um, children in nursery, 130 or so in reception class, and 116 uh, in year one. Um, the, uh, we've done some basic psychometrics on the measure here. Uh, for this sample of 300-odd kids, we co-administered the app with the KELF Expressive Vocabulary Test and the KELF Sentence Repetition Subtest. And you can see here the correlations of 0.86 between the Atlas Expressive Vocabulary Measure and the KELF Expressive Vocabulary Measure and a correlation of 0.85 between the Atlas Sentence Repetition Measure and the KELF Sentence Repetition Measure. So. Uh, psychometrically it looks as though it's got very good properties uh, just below in that table there you can see the reliabilities these are Cronbach's alphas so reliabilities here ranging from 0.82 to 0.90 uh, the reliability of the overall global test is actually close to 90 so I think we feel pretty pleased that this is a test with uh, apparently excellent uh, psychometric properties. This table here just shows uh, the correlations between the different subtests um, of ATLAS and what you can see is that those correlations are pretty uniform and pretty moderately high. They're all uh, basically in, in, in the 0.6 to 0.7 range. Um, we can go on and look at its factor structure. Here's a confirmatory factor analysis. Um, if any of you here are interested in these things, you'll see that this model has essentially a perfect fit to the data. Uh, this yields essentially a unidimensional language construct with very large and again pretty uniform loadings from the different subtests that we're using in ATLAS to, to measure language abilities. So um, I think broadly we're very pleased with these um, initial data. So what are the advantages of doing testing like this? 
I think there are many and varied. First of all, this is very easy to do. It's designed to be used by teachers and based on our piloting, the test can be administered in around eight minutes. So it's a very, very easy thing to do. The use of ha having this automated in the app basically reduces or eliminates differences in test administration. Um, some of the subtests are automatically scored, which again uh, reduces or in some cases eliminates errors in scoring. And both of these advantages, I think, will serve to improve the reliability of uh, this test. We haven't done this yet, but it's clearly going to be very simple and straightforward to use uh, this to generate automatic reports for each child which tabulates each child's scores on the different language subtests and in indicates whether a child is uh, showing uh, signs of uh, language difficulties. Um, in terms of the next steps, we're just starting um, a large randomised control trial, uh, which Jill West in the front row will be in charge of, lucky Jill. Um, in this RCT, we'll be recruiting in the region of 200 schools, and in 100 of those schools, the children with the lowest language scores in reception class will receive the Nuffield Early Language Intervention Programme delivered by teaching assistants um, working in the schools. We're going to be using ATLAS as a screening device in this RCT, so come September, all appendages crossed, we'll have data from around 5,000 reception class children on the ATLAS. We'll use the data from ATLAS then to identify the five lowest scoring children in each classroom uh, in the intervention arm to receive um, the language intervention that we're uh, going to deliver. Um, and in line with uh, this RCT, we're also going to be collecting data in other classrooms uh, to get a wider range of ages but basically within the next um, 12 months or so we hope to have collected uh, data sufficient for, for the standardisation. I mean I think actually the 5,000 children <laughs> in the RCT sample will give us a pretty outstandingly large sample for standardization of, of it for that for that age group for the reception class age group. Um, I said I'd also say a few words about intervention but I haven't actually prepared any slides on that. We so far have not delivered um, any interventions online. There are quite a lot of interventions online. I would say that this is an area where currently I think there's um, an awful lot of bullshit and an awful lot of bad science. Um, the two forms of intervention that are probably most widely sold, uh, computer delivered, are working memory training, uh, particularly CogMed training, published by Pearson. We've now published two meta-analyses showing very clearly to my mind that this does not work. Uh, the publishers are still tell selling it and the people who believe in it still believe in it. But actually, there's absolutely not one scrap of evidence that working memory training produces robust, durable and generalizable benefits for children's cognitive development. The other uh, form of computerized intervention that has been used a lot is um, the Fast for Word program published by the Scientific Learning Corporation. Might be better to take Scientific out of their brand name, I think. Um, this is a company started by Paula Talal and Michael Mersnick, 
based on Talal's theory that children with language learning impairments have problems in the auditory processing of speech. So that uses computer generated or computer manipulated speech to slow form and transitions with the hope of making children learn better. Again, we've published a meta-analysis on that. There's absolutely no evidence that it improves children's language skills. Um, and I actually think that doing intervention, particularly for language, is very difficult. <laughs> we train teaching assistants to work with children at, at the correct level of their learning ability and in a highly interactive way. It may be possible to put some of this in a can and put it on a computer, but it's going to be a massive challenge. And at the moment, I think we're in a period where, to speak plainly, there's lots of fraudulent stuff going on and we've not really um, engaged with that. Anyway, um, that's all I've got to say. Just basically that I think the payoffs for automated testing of cognitive skills like this is huge and I think we feel quite pleased that we've got the makings of a very effective um, language measurement instrument. Thank you.